Hello and welcome to this uh, short lecture on charging infrastructure for heavy-duty vehicles. My name is Lucien Mathieu. I'm manager at uh, Transport Environment. Short introduction on Transport Environment or TE. We're Europe's leading clean transport campaign group. We work on sustainable transport policy, mostly focusing on the European institutions in Brussels. As a short introduction as well, I would like to give uh, an overview of transport emissions. Transport is actually Europe's biggest climate problem, with 28% of the CO2 emissions, and this includes also aviation and shipping. And the sad news is that this problem is actually getting worse. On this slide, you can see uh, the blue line, which shows the evolution of transport emissions over time. These emissions have been increasing since the 1990s, with only a short decrease during the financial crisis, and now increasing again. So, as part of road transport emissions, as part of transport emissions, road transport actually accounts for 70% of those emissions. And this we can see here when we add cars, vans, and heavy-duty vehicles. So, it's a majority of those emissions are from the road transport. And actually, for road transport, we do have a technical solution. We do have a solution to reduce those emissions, and that is uh, electrification, battery electric vehicle. In this slide here, I want to give a comparison of the life cycle emissions of battery electric trucks compared to other technologies, mainly comparing to diesel or gas trucks, LNG here. And we see that today, electric trucks emit already two times less CO2 emissions. Uh, and this will only improve over the years as the electricity grid gets cleaner and cleaner. On the left side uh, of this slide, you can see um, the, an infographic comparing the life cycle emissions for a big articulated uh, semi tractor trailer truck. And on the right hand side for a smaller rigid 12 ton truck, which would be uh, used in urban uh, operations. Now the EU is addressing and tackling these emissions through uh, the truck CO2 emission standards that were proposed in 2019. And these standards actually require truck maker to reduce CO2 emissions from new trucks by 15% in 2025 and 30% in 2030. And this is compared to a baseline in 2019. However, what we see is that um, although these, these CO2 standards are driving the market today, the market is actually moving faster than those targets. Um, on this slide here, we see we give an overview of the commitments, voluntary commitments made by the different truck makers in Europe. So in 2025, when we put those commitments together, we see that um, the, the, the expected emissions from, uh, from new the expected market share for zero emission trucks would be around um, 7% in 2025 and slightly more than 40% in 2030. Now to, um, to, to, to take in, into account these new zero emission electric trucks coming to the market, what we need is to provide a complete master plan for electric truck charging. Here on the slide we give we show on the left side uh, the cover of two reports that TNE has published uh, over the past couple of years. The first one uh, uh, on the left focusing on cities, so assessing the charging needs for trucks in cities over the next uh, decades. And the second one on the right looking at long haul trips, so charging alongside the highways. Now, this master plan could also be uh, considered with um, four key uh, main different types of charging. So this is what we highlight on the infographic on the right here. So first of all, we have the depot charging. So this is charging uh, at the depot overnight uh, while the truck is, is basically uh, not being used. Secondly, we have the distribution and logistics centers. So we call this sometimes destination charging. So this is charging while the truck is loading or unloading cargo, which, which can take between one hour or three hours uh, during one day. Then we have public charging hubs. So these are uh, chargers which are publicly accessible, mainly in 
in urban areas uh, and used by drivers to top up the truck when they need to. Uh, and finally, charging alongside the highways uh, for long haul trips uh, to enable those, those, those longer distance trips. Now, the EU is actually uh, came forward uh, in July of 2021 with a proposal for a new uh, law on charging infrastructure. This law is called the Alternative Fuels Infrastructure Regulation, or AFIR, and uh, it covers both light-duty vehicles and heavy-duty vehicles. Here in this slide, I will focus on giving an overview of what did this law this proposed law includes for heavy-duty vehicles. First of all, its scope covers uh, electric truck charging, but also hydrogen refueling for trucks and gas refueling for trucks, so, so LNG. So it sets targets for 2025, 2030, and 2035, uh, and the different locations which are addressed are the TNT Corn Comprehensive Networks, which are the um, EU uh, highways, so the main highways and the secondary uh, highways, the urban nodes, which are the main urban areas, and truck parking areas. So the targets are the following. For uh, alongside highways, the target, the, the coverage of the main highways needs to be ensured by 2025, and the coverage for the secondary highways needs to be ensured by 2030, whereas truck parking areas need to be covered with overnight chargers by 2030. When it comes to urban nodes, so the main urban areas, here we need charging hubs from 2025 according to this planned proposal. For hydrogen refueling, there we have targets that start in 2030 to cover the, 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 the highways and the urban areas. And then uh, for gas refueling, we have uh, um, a rather vague requirements to set appropriate number of uh, refueling points in 2025. Now, finally, as a last slide, I would like to give um, an overview of, of uh, what uh, we as TNE would uh, like to see as improvement to uh, this proposal. So we would like to see three main improvements. The first one is the increase in the number of uh, chargers for heavy duty vehicles. And here the reason for that is that the European Commission uh, underestimates the number of battery electric trucks, which leads to uh, an underestimate of the number of chargers required. Uh, so we can do this by increasing the charging capacities of the hubs. Secondly, we would like to see a reduction in the ambition of the hydrogen requirements. The reason of this is quite simple. We see uh, in the impact assessment that the proposal would actually spend five times more on hydrogen refueling than on truck charging infrastructure over the next decade. And up to 2050, this would actually be 12 times more. Well, actually, the number of hydrogen trucks assumed on the road in 2030 is around half compared to the number of battery electric trucks. So this is not in line with the market potential and market readiness uh, of the different technologies. Finally, what we would like to see as well are charging requirements at the freight logistics centers. So this covers the destination charging that I mentioned earlier. At the moment, they are not covered under the infrastructure law although a significant part of the charging will happen at these locations when trucks load or unload cargo. And this location would be mainly located uh, around urban areas and would be essential uh, you know, charging locations in order to uh, decarbonize uh, city logistics as well. So thank you very much for your attention.